Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Larry Hummer and very glad to be leading worship as Pastor Brommer is off today. And we welcome Deb Delane as our musician today and thank her for serving us. I call to your attention the announcements that are in the bulletin. A couple of announcements in particular. Uh, this is the last week for donations for the personal care kits. And next Sunday, we will start collecting the items for school kits. And the information for school kits is in the announcements. And also a reminder that uh, this week, July 31st, is the deadline for registering for Vacation Bible School. In our gospel reading today, we hear the familiar story of Jesus feeding people. It's a story that reminds us how generous God is with us. It's also a story that seeks to engage us in performing what we might consider miracles. Let us prepare for worship with the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding 
rather than trusting in you, we take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading comes from Second Kings. A man came from Baasha, Belisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. We will read responsibly Psalm 145. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell you of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, 
Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. The second reading comes from Ephesians 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power throughout his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with awe, the fulfillness to God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, There's a boy here who has five loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to them and those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountains by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. 
and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Only one of Jesus' miracles appears in all four Gospels. And it's the story that we heard this morning. We heard it this morning from John's Gospel. Last week you heard this story from Mark's Gospel. The same story essentially is written also by Matthew and Luke. It's a story of the feeding of a multitude of people. Apparently this event made such a deep impression on the minds and hearts of those present that it was one of those unforgettable moments of life. Evidently, none of the gospel writers could forget this story. It had such an impact. Jesus wanted some time away. He was tired. People kept coming to him for help. They were kept so busy, they didn't even have time to eat. Jesus and his disciples needed some time away to regroup, to renew themselves. Jesus decided they would go the four miles across the lake and rest there. As soon as the crowd saw what he was up to, they ran around the end of the lake. Some were already there waiting for him when he arrived. The great physician was no sooner in the boat when he saw his patients coming to his vacation spot. The crowds kept following Jesus, and the disciples, even when they went up to the mountain, there was no getting away from them. Besides the needs or wants which brought the people to him, Jesus perceived another problem. They were hungry. Most had not eaten that day. This was a serious problem because most of the people didn't have much to eat anyway. If you or I missed a meal today, it probably would do us some good. I know it would do me some good. If, however, we were used to eating minimal meals or only one meal a day. The skipping of that one meal could have serious consequences. Well, the disciples had a solution to this problem. Send the people away. When you send the people away, the problem disappears. It will disappear because they will no longer see them or hear them. Tell the people to go. Let them buy themselves something to eat. It's not our problem, said the disciples. It's their problem. In terms of good analysis today, the disciples were trying to help the people take responsibility for themselves. A boy was sent by his mother to the grocery store to buy a dozen eggs. On the way home from the store, the boy stumbled. The eggs all fell and splattered on the sidewalk. The boy burst into tears. People who happened by felt sorry for the boy. Then something happened. One person said, oh, I'm so sorry this happened. Here's a dime. A child in the crowd said, I'm sorry, here's a penny. Others joined in until the boy had enough change 
to return to the store and buy another dozen eggs. Compassion happens when we say, I'm sorry, here's a dime. Or, I'm sorry, here's a dollar. Or twenty dollars. Or a hundred dollars. The sorrier we are, the more we ought to express it. Most problems can be fixed if someone cares. The disciples' solution was to send the people away. Jesus didn't find this to be an acceptable solution. Jesus' answer to the problem was to try to find a solution, even though he already knew what he was going to do. Jesus believed that problems were meant to be solved. They were challenges to rise to, not difficulties from which to run. Problems are a test of our faith. Problems are a test of our faith. Our human difficulties give God an opportunity to demonstrate his divine presence in our world and in our life. Human difficulties are God's opportunities. Jesus says to the disciples, you do something about these problems. Philip's response to Jesus was, if we try to feed all these people, it would take six months' worth of wages. You don't really expect us to do that, Philip must have thought. That was a logical response. On the human level, Jesus' suggestion doesn't make sense. Few people can spend six months of their wages feeding the hungry of the world and live on to the and live on the remainder of the money. The disciples were missing two things, however. They were missing their own resources, and they were forgetting the power of God. Their own resources were five loaves of bread and two fish. Well, that was enough to feed some people, but certainly not 5,000. But God took what they handed and miraculously used it to satisfy everyone. And there was even food left over. What we have to offer is usually not enough. It's not enough to solve the world's problems. But our resources, plus the power of God, can solve many problems. Remember what Mother Teresa answered when asked how she was going to relieve all the pain and suffering in the world? She responded, one person at a time. In other words, don't think about how little you have to offer in relation to the size of the problem. We are to get solutions. Human problems with God's help can be solved. This story tells us, shows us, who Jesus is. The story tells us that Jesus is God and God can work miracles. It reminds us that God can even bring life when all appears to be hopeless. But the story also tells us who we are. We are limited and we're often controlled by human logic. We don't take God into consideration enough when we try to solve our human problems. The story didn't end until a few days later 
as we will hear in the gospel reading next Sunday. After being fed, some people continued to hang around Jesus. They thought he was nice. Jesus would feed them and they didn't have to do anything. They were trying to take advantage of his power. Jesus says to the people, you are looking for me not because you see signs, but because you ate your fill of the bread. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Jesus refused to be a miracle worker only for human need. He believed the world needed more than a good baker. He came to do more than nourish the human body. He wanted people, he wants us, to see that through the bread, we see God himself. Jesus calls us not to look at the bread, but to the food that endures for eternal life. The story of the miracle feeding tells us that God is in Jesus and that God can do whatever he wants. The story tells us that God is lavish, very generous to us. But the story also tells us that when we commit to God's saving power, we will be new creatures and able to share what he has given us with others. There's a kitchen wall plaque that reads, love is a basket with five loaves and two fishes. It's never enough until you start to give it away. Where's the miracle in this story? The miracles in your life and mine waiting to happen. Miracles happen when we share. That's the real miracle. That's the real evidence of being united with God. Amen. We profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer petitions end. Hear us, O God. We ask you to respond, your mercy is great. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of this congregation and all who strive to serve those in need. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for creation 
send rain to lands experiencing drought, and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Teach us how to be good stewards of your wondrous creation entrusted to our care. Hear us, O God. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Send peace to those who suffer due to injustice, prejudice, conflict, or war. Hear us, O God. We pray for those weighed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for your healing presence. This day, we pray especially for Betsy Barnhouse, Bob Betleon, Susan Bianchi, Sue Bishop, Fran Buchanan, Ruth Byerly, Kathy Domici, Wally Falkrod, Marcia Garrett, Libby Glatfelder, Annie Girl, Marie Halliday, Carolyn Hess, Donna Hickson, Rosa Vina Homasak, Mary Hebner, Andrew Kinsinger, Mike Kozer, Courtney Christen, Diane Lingle, Carl Mahadi, Bill and Laura McEwen, Steve Miller, Sharon Murray, Linda Ott, Ed Reynolds, Julie Sellard, Margaret Sherrick, Eva Shoup, Ira Shoup, Carl Silman, Christine Terhoon, Stephanie Warfield, Mike Welty, and all those whom we name now in our hearts before you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly, deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Encourage us in our faith journey and unite us as the body of Christ, sent into the world to share your gospel message. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for those who have died. As you have sustained them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Give hope to all who mourn the promise of our faith filled with your light and resurrection life in your kingdom. This day we pray especially for the family of Eleanor Gould and the family of the Reverend Sharon Blessard. Hear us, O God. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. We ask you to share that peace with others in an appropriate way.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. As we share Holy Communion, hear these words, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessings of God, which provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever.